Good morning, everybody. Um, our scripture today is from Mark uh, chapter one. And I thought it was interesting that there's actually um, several versions of this scripture in the, in the gospels. Matthew has one almost identical to it, but Luke's is a little bit different. So I've compared them a little bit for us to chat a little bit about it today. So Mark 1, verses 14 and 15 says, um, after John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God, saying the time has come, the kingdom of God has come near, repent and believe the good news. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. And then the the story that we are all very familiar with is Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee. He saw Simon, Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said unto them, come after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. And straightway they forsook their, nation, their nets and followed him. And when he had gone a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who also were in the ship mending their nets. And straightway he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants and went after him. This story has always been about following Jesus. It's always been about what would we give up to follow Jesus. But the, the twist for me today is what it really is. This is the beginning of the disciples. These four men were the first of the 12 disciples. And so they chose that day what it meant to, to display sacrificial love. And it was hard for them to leave their, their father, their work, because their work was very important to them. And I really don't think this scripture is trying to tell us that we need to abandon our work because as we all know, we can't. <laughs> so the issue then for me is to ask ourselves, what is sacrificial love? So the, the second part, the interesting thing for me is that Luke has a different um, version of this story with an in the end of the story is actually the same but the beginning is a little different and i i'd like to read that to you so simon is in the boat this time and jesus jesus told him to launch the boat into the deep and let down his nets for a catch but simon said to him um i'm sorry but we've toiled all night and there's nothing we can't catch anything but at your word jesus i will try again so they, they, they threw out their nets, nets again. And this, this time they'd caught so much fish that their nets were breaking and the, and the boat was sinking. And Simon was afraid. He, he fell down on his knees and he said to Jesus, leave me, I'm a sinful man. And all the fishermen were astonished at this catch. But Jesus said to him, do not be afraid, Simon. From now on, you will catch men. You will be fishers of men. So once again, when they brought their boats to the land, they forsook all and followed him. So, so what does it mean to become fishers of men? What does it mean to have sacrificial love? Those were the questions I asked myself in preparation for today. And in some of my reading, um, I read that the fishermen of Jesus's time did a lot of work to be fishermen. Those nets are very, it's very hard to catch fish in the net. And you'll see in Mark that some of the fishermen were mending their nets. And so they had to mend, they had to clean, and they had to learn how to spread the nets to get the fish. So they were already working hard when Jesus met them. And, and so for them to give that up was the kind of sacrifice 
that pretty, was pretty much unheard of during that time. And, and what they were giving up was that kind of love for the work for the material things. And they were following Jesus into his kind of love. So when I, when I translate it to today, what it means to me is that, no, I'm not gonna give up my job, but I am gonna say to myself, where is my love? Where am I sacrificing my love? As you all know, I've got a job that's, that's um, kind of taxing on the brain. <laughs> and um, it, it, it isn't my heart, it's my head. And it's a challenge for me a lot of times. And, there, and there's a lot of it that I enjoy. There's a lot that I, I find, you know, I, I like to be competitive, obviously. And I like to argue, obviously. <laughs> but when I think about what my job means to me, it isn't what Jesus is talking about. And I think that's what he was saying to the fishermen. All work is important. Yes, your work is important. But what's more important is sacrificing something to follow me. And one of, um, one of our worship helps comments in our church was that Jesus showed us that God has a radical interest in humanity, a radical interest in humanity. I thought those were interesting words. So what is sacrificial love? It, it, is, it is finding what is in you that is a radical interest in humanity, especially right now. We all know the turmoil that we are in right now, the, the COVID, the, the political, the, the race issues. There isn't any side of it that we're calm about. We are all, we're agitated. <laughs> we are scared. I think of, I think of Simon when he fell down on his knees and said to God, I'm not worthy. I'm too much of a sinner. And I do think we've all had those moments. We've had those moments to say, what am I doing? You know, I, some of us are more isolated than others. That is very, very hard to do. But more importantly, we are questioning what does it mean to follow Christ right now? When I was in Finland, a lot of you know that I was there for a year. I left home when I was 17 years old. And um, I spent the entire year in Finland and I don't know why, but the 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 um, the company that sent us there would not let any family visit and wouldn't let us go home at all. And they thought that was a good idea. <laughs> it wasn't. I can tell you that right now. But what I realized, especially when I got home, I, I kind of realized it during the year. But uh, what I realized was that my father had sacrificial love for me, letting me go. All of you parents know that feeling. You gotta let go of your children. And what I realized, especially when I got home and I got off the plane and my father had grayed, I'm pretty sure that I single-handedly caused his gray hairs. And, um, but for him, I think he trusted the Lord and I think he trusted me. And he had, he had that radical interest in me. And of course he still does. Every parent does. But what did that mean to me? At the time, it made me sad. But I've had a lot of years, uh, 40, I actually counted them up. <laughs> I've had 40 years to think about that year and what it meant to me and what it meant to my father. And as you all know, there are certain experiences that we have that never leave us. They just kind of grow in understanding. And, and that was one of them. And when I was in Finland, dad used to send me uh, cassette tapes. Remember the days when we had cassette tapes? He sent me cassette tapes of his sermons. And one of them was, 
this one, this scripture, Fishers of Men. And he told a story when he was a, when he was a camp leader that he was helping some young women be brave to say testimonies. A lot of us remember in our camp experiences that the very last service, we we're all, you know, we're standing up, we're saying how much we love each other and we're standing up and we're kind of dedicating our lives to Christ again. It's emotional and it's spiritual and it's some of the best memories of my life. But dad told the story that there were two girls that he just kind of watched because he knew them and he knew, he knew they were scared to say a testimony and he, and he could see them kind of rocking in their seat together, holding hands, encouraging each other to stand and say a testimony. And dad used that analogy to say, this is what it means to be brave and to leave behind your fears and to follow Christ. Because it is something that simple, standing up and saying your testimony. So he was proud of those girls. And of course, here I am 40 years later remembering that story because I was sitting there, remember I'm 17 years old sitting there in Finland, you know, scared. <laughs> it was a very scary year for me. And so my father's radical love got me through it. He got me through it. So what does it mean for me now to have radical love, to have radical interest in humanity? Another site says it's our job to be radical leaders. It's our job to build um, unity and harmony. How do we do that today? I, I honestly don't know. I only know of examples around me. I, I know of my father. I know of Avis. Sandy Tugman is Avis's daughter. And um, as, as many of you have read, she wrote a tribute to her mom after she died last week. So many of her words struck me because of course, Sandy's words were as beautiful as her mom's. Sandy is a poet and an artist. And if you haven't gotten to know her yet, she is an incredible human being. But I wanted to read a little bit of what she said that has just resonated for me this, this whole week. She called Avis a living gift, a life force who gave as much love as she could. As much love as she could. That was who Avis was. Some of us were lucky most of us here in this little room were lucky to be on the side of that love. To me, that is sacrificial love. And the other, the other thing that Sandy talked about was that Avis taught her to embrace art as expression, as healing. And then she said, Avis taught her to embrace art as salvation. That one has kind of haunted me this week. What does it mean to me that art is our salvation? Because I gotta tell you, it really is mine. When I slow myself down and remember to read scripture, to read Psalms, to, to sing, to listen to hymns, to read poetry, to paint, to draw, I gotta get my flute out. <laughs> Art is our salvation. 
I want to fight for the humanity in all of us, for the art in all of us, for the kind of sacrificial love that Jesus gave us and that Avis gave us and that my father gave me. And each of you have somebody in your life who has given you that kind of love. And so we ask ourselves, is this the kind of love that we are giving? Are we willing to symbolically leave behind the loves of the world? To become fishers of men. I don't think it just means to bring men and women to Christ. I think it means being, bringing women and men and women to Christ's love. That's what Jesus was telling them about. Love like I have loved you. So we as a congregation have the duty. I'll say the word duty because we are probably more diverse than any other church. So we have the duty to fight for humanity, to fight for unity, to fight for sacrificial love. And we as a body of Christ can do that when we remember that Christ is our example, that we need to slow down and remember the art in our world, the music, the beauty, And that is how we can help get our country through this trying time. I think each of us can. I know who all of you are. <laughs> and I know that we can do this together. If we reach out to each other, we reach out to our loved ones and we find somebody to give that same sacrificial love. Thank you.